Hello everyone, welcome back to another how-to video. We're going to be uh, replacing the rails on a uh, 2021 Ski-Doo Summit SP. Uh, Bubba bent the rails up pretty good, so we uh, purchased some Ice Age rails. And uh, we're going to do a swap out. And uh, hopefully this helps you out. Um, again, first time doing it. So just kind of show you what a, if a novice could do it or somebody that's somewhat mechanically inclined can pull this off. But if this you find this video helpful, please subscribe, comment below. Feel free to you know, drop us a line, give us some tips and tricks. Um, the goal of this video is to just help people out, get people back out there riding and enjoying snowmobiling. Thanks for watching. How you can tell it's been is the track won't uh, won't slide up next to the high facts here. And so if you look down here, there's a gap. See, I stick my finger in there, right? And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then it's essentially touching. And then it gets, the gap opens up again. So it looks like we hit something over here and bent these two rails over this way. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so um, when I tried to take the bolt off the other side, this side was coming off and on. The other one was kind of like stuck on there. So I just took that bolt out. I put a 13 mil on there, the round end, the box end, and then put the wrench on there. And then I took and I pulled really hard like this to kind of put some pressure on it to kind of kink it out. Because um, that other side over here, Bubble side. That one there did not want to come out, but that seemed to do the trick. So we cinched, cinched that down really good on both sides. Put that wrench in there, cranked on it, held that like that, and then Bubble was able to break his side loose. And then once we got that side out, you know what I mean? We just kind of crank on this, threw an impact on there, threw that on there. And then just kind of pulled that like that and it worked its way back. So we get this one out at the same time. So if not, the shaft in there spins. But uh, yeah, that's how we got it out of there. So one thing to remember is um, if you're having trouble breaking a bolt loose, uh, always get a bigger wrench. So we had trouble getting this one loose. So we uh, just got ourselves some breaking bars just to get it loose, to get the the Loctite knocked off and then you can use your impact and stuff. So, we've got our four bolts out. Be careful, these things are gonna be floating around there. Make sure you grab those so you don't lose those. Your front and back. All right. And then, once you got those four out, it should come right out, so. Those rods that were spinning around on there, your, your bolts going each side of these. So that's what was spinning around. That's your bolts going each side. Set these off to the side for a minute. Well, as you know, guys, we bent the rails in the old Ski Summit. 
So we ordered ourselves some of the Ice Age rails. We got the bomber for the 154. We got the blue ones. Here they are. They look pretty sick. Um, I do want to note that I called them, uh, spoke to someone on the phone, placed the order, and uh, did one day shipping. It was very affordable. They're out of Montana. And they came quick. UPS showed right up. Got them um, quicker than I anticipated. But huge shout out to their ordering process. It is pretty uh, smooth. And I got to talk to somebody and they helped me with the order. So next step, we'll get this thing, these things installed. Also want to mention when you place your order for rails, they come with your high facts. Um, these came with white. So it would be uh, the blue to white. And we ordered the bomber uh, ice um, rail. So the bomber's, I guess, a pound heavier. However, uh, they're supposed to be stronger than the other um, model they provide. The name escapes me, I can't think of it, but because we're pretty reckless and hard on the equipment, we want we uh, opt for the stronger, heavier solution. So I probably won't even be able to tell, but we'll let you know on the first ride. Anyways, we're going to move the, the wheels over and yeah, we'll take it off the old one. So um, move the wheels over and then um, reinstall our track tensioners. There's just a little knot in there. Okay, it goes in there like that. And then um, it's going to slide in this little hole right here. And then this goes into here. So what's kind of different on these rails is that on the stock ones, it's actually notched out. Um, where these ones actually are reinforced all the way up through, um, which I think that's what's going to give it a little more strength. But um, I'm just going to use a little impact here and just to run them in a bit so that they're not flopping around too much. Try not to scratch the pretty rails up. Okay, so I think that's good for that portion of it. The next step is we're going to take out. Um, we're going to take this assembly out now. All right. See how that goes. So when you take this apart, you skid apart like uh, items like this here, this little cross piece here. Um, they got some Loctite in there, right? And you may, when you take it apart, you're going to see that there's some in there. And I found that if you uh, take a torch and you heat it up, Clean up the bowl. You heat up, heat up the bolt with a torch. Just a, you know, regular little home, um, you know, do-it-yourself or home job. If I got a Lowe's, if you heat it up, you can actually cook off all the Loctite. So it's nice and clean, so that way when you go to put Loctite on it, um, you get the maximum amount of surface area out of it. So I'll flip this up. Grab right a hold of it with your hand. Just kidding, just kidding, over that. Grab it with some wrench or a pair of pliers. And you see that all the, the gunk is cooked off in there. I'm just gonna throw some water over here. Cool. And then you can see that the bolt is nice and clean. So some items like this, this uh, aluminum bar that goes through, kind of holds things in place. Um, this bolt that screws in there, um, we're gonna, you gotta put Loctite on that for that to hold that in there. But some of the, the nuts have neoprene inside of them. I think that's what it's called in there. And those ones you don't have to Loctite. That little, um, looks almost like, like plastic that's in there. That'll uh, hold your bolt from, your nut from backing off. I'm probably gonna put a little Loctite in there just cause I'm paranoid and there's nothing worse like this. Again, than your stuff coming apart when you're out riding, especially on your day off. That's the last thing you wanna do is be rustling with loose bolts. All right, we're gonna put some of this together and give a little update. So, um, 
to re reuse these bump stops here, and they're in there with uh, pop rivets. So, um, what I found the easiest way to do get those out is, is uh, take some vice grips, lock on the back side there, okay, and then go ahead and just uh, get a drill bit. Make sure it's a little bit oversized so that you you catch it there. Um, and just uh, drill those them out, and there you go. That's simple. Um, little tech tip. Get those out of there. And just kind of show you something fun here. Like uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show you how bent they were. I don't know how, what the heck we did, but what Bubba did. They were pretty tweaked. So hopefully the. Uh, Ice Age ones hold up a little better. So we just got the HyFax installed on the uh, Ice Age rails. As you can see. So when you order the rails, they send you the HyFax with them. And they, uh, the reason being is that your stock ones, the hole is in a different spot. Plus, heck, you know, you got the skid out, might as well throw a new set of uh, high facts in, right? But um, I made a mistake right out of the gate. So what I did was, is as you know, um, you got your, the original high facts, right? So here's the stock one here. And, uh, you know, obviously I lined them up because you got to cut them to length. But I thought that the hole here, so that's the hole for the stock mount. Well, the hole for the Ice Age rails is actually back further. And I was in a hurry and um, I thought, well, I'll cut the new ones to match the old one. Well, little did I know that the hole was in the wrong spot. So what I did was, is I flipped around the Hyfax. I drilled my own hole using a, uh, a 5 8 paddle bit and then uh, that seems to be the whole size is 5 8 and then it's a touch it's a touch short here but in any regard um, at least get us on the trail for this weekend but one thing I would do want to recommend is that uh, these Torx heads here these screws are self tapping okay so I was trying to use a quarter inch Torx bit, okay? And um, as you guys know out there, Torx bits, you, you know, when you put a lot of pressure on them, it's scary because you're afraid to strip them. So um, what really helped was I went out and I got a 3 8 inch Torx head, which gave me more leverage. And uh, plus the bit was brand new. Um, so that kind of made a better, you know, connection to the Torx bit. Because when you run those Torx bits or those Torx screws in, they're self-tapping and those holes are cutting new threads. So the first time is kind of hard and it's kind of nerve wracking because you know, you don't want to strip it out or screw it up or I'll show you guys whatever. the stock versus the uh, Ice Age aftermarkets. Give you a little overview of the differences. Um, you'll see in the stock, there's a lot more holes in it um, in, in the side or through it. Oh, versus the Ice Age, um, so maybe a little heavier, but here I'll show you. Let's check it out. So, like I said, put the front bolts in first and the second bolts here, the rear bolts here, because you can move these around a little, a lot easier you can see the hole. Um, so I tried to do it the other way. I put the rears in first then wrestled to the front. I was like, oh, let's try it the other way. Putting the ones in the front is way easier. And again, uh, it's like a $200, $250 lift. Makes it a whole lot easier. Especially if you want to save your back. Let me tighten these babies up. 
So the next step is we're going to uh, do our track tension and alignment. So uh, the first step you want to do is measure back of the skid here, the bolt near the axle bolt, uh, up about 16 inches. Um, so that's going to be about where you're going to put um, some sort of scale. So I know that there's some tools out there where um, it presses down on the track to give you your pressure. Uh, what I did is I got just a, a fish scale that you can get anywhere. Um, you can even set it to, um, in this case, we're going to do 15 pounds with a fancy hook. This track actually has a holes in the bottom of it so you can there's slots so about 15 inches 16 inches from the rear we're going to put our scale 15 pounds and then make sure we're at inch and a quarter gap between the track and the high effects best thing to do is find a piece of material like a piece of wood or or a piece of metal just so you can slide in there because the tape can be kind of a pain in the butt. So we're going to pull down 15 pounds and check it. So we're an inch right now on the uh, our gap. So then if you want to loosen or tighten it, it's going to come on in here to these tensioner bolts and um, Obviously, tighten and loosen as you feel necessary. And then the next step that you have to do is you got to make sure that your track is aligned properly. So there's a little gap between the high fax and the track. So you want to make sure that that gap is even on both sides. So I do recommend once you get it close, don't forget to take this off, start the snowmobile. Run it for a second at a very low speed. Then check your gap on both sides. Make sure it looks good. In this case, it looks pretty good, right? So, once you have that, you can go ahead and and tighten up your rear axle bolt as necessary. You might want to look up the, the torque specs on that for your machine. All right, looks like we got everything installed. Just give you one little uh, overview here before we go test and tune, right? So that's what she looks like all installed. She is pretty. We like the colors. But uh, yeah, I think she's ready to go. We'll give it a shot and let you know. My little cob job here, the little tab broke off, so we uh, just ground it off and put a washer on there, see if that holds up. It's like a quick thing. <laughs> 